Welcome to another physics lesson from Highland High School. Today's lesson is going to cover conservative and non-conservative forces and their role in the work energy theorem. To help with the explanation of today's lesson, we are going to look at the energy skate park simulation from the PHET website. In this simulation, we see that we have a skater here who's kind of doing a little dance right now because he's in motion. Very, very small motion, but motion nonetheless. Uh, what we're going to first do is we're going to, whenever you're dealing with uh, gravity, you want to set a potential energy reference level. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the potential energy reference level, and we're going to put it at the lowest spot that we can. So we're going to reference everything from the bottom of the track because you'll never go below it. So we might as well call PE0 at this point. Now, to do this simulation, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the skater as he skates up and down the ramp. So I'm going to place him at a position that has some kind of height to it. And when I let go of him, we see that he goes back and forth along the ramp. Now, in this particular simulation, I've taken friction out. So when friction is taken out, what we need to do is we need to look at the individual forces that will be acting on the skater at any given time. So when he gets up to the top, I will pause him. And what we see up here at the top, when we look at the skater, if we were to draw a free body diagram, we would see that this little point is indicating where the skater technically is. And we see that there would be a gravitational force pointing down. We see that there would be a um, normal force pointing perpendicular. And no other forces would be present because friction, we said, is going to be eliminated in this scenario. If it was here, it would have pointed this way. And there is nothing propelling him downward. So we see that he will move along the ramp. And if we look carefully, we see that only one force is actually accomplishing work because if the displacement of the skater at this particular instant or the motion, I should say, is pointing along the ramp, we would see that the normal force always points out perpendicular to the ramp. So the normal force in this case, although it is what's considered to be a non-conservative force, it doesn't have any impact on the skater's motion here, so it can be neglected. Gravitational force, on the other hand, though, as we see, points straight down. And because it points straight down and the motion of the skater is along the ramp, there would be an angle between those two vectors if they were drawn here indicating that gravity is going to do the work. Now, if we hit play and we watch the skater go back and forth, we can also look at a graph to see what's actually happening here. So I'm going to put on this bar graph. And if I drag the bar graph over to the side, what we can see is that the total energy of the system remains constant. And we see that the energy itself is in two forms. It's potential and kinetic that are continually fluctuating back and forth. We notice that if I hit pause at the top, that the energy is in the form of potential with very little kinetic. And that's because potential energy is based off height, and we do have a height compared to this particular spot. The kinetic energy is in essence zero because he's at the top and he stopped moving. And at this point is when he turns around to come back. If we hit play and pause at the bottom, we see that the kinetic energy is boosted up because now he's at his fastest speed, which has come at the expense of the potential energy that he once had because he has very little height left. Now, this is because gravity is a conservative force. A conservative force is one that will behave this way. When a conservative force is present, the energy will just switch between kinetic and potential energy, keeping the total energy always constant. Now, what we're going to do this time, though, is I'm going to let the skater get back up to the top, go back to the start. But at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of friction in. So if I put track friction, and I just put a tiny little coefficient here and turn on the bar graph, what we will see is that we have a total energy. Right now, it's all potential because he's at the top, very little kinetic, and no thermal energy. In the previous lesson, or I'm sorry, in the previous example, there was no thermal energy. Now what we will do is when we apply the friction, if we look at our free body diagram, normal force still will do no work because it will be perpendicular to the motion. Gravity still does some work. And friction is now introduced. And if we notice that friction always points backwards, so friction will always oppose the motion, meaning that the friction will contribute negative work. And by definition, negative work means you will lose energy in your system. Um, in this form, we're going to lose mechanical energy. So I'll hit play, and we'll see what happens. If we notice... The kinetic and the potential are continually rising, um, but what we see here is that the thermal is not actually uh, increasing yet at all, so I didn't use enough coefficients, so I'm going to do that again. I'll put a little bit more uh, friction in this time. 
Uh, it looks like it slid down. So if we check our graph now, we see that as he moves, the thermal energy is continuing to increase. While these two still are fluctuating, but they're going down and down and down. Notice that his motion on the other side is slowing down and slowing down and slowing down. That basically means that he is losing this energy in its mechanical form. Now, the law of conservation of energy is valid, but just not the way we've been using it in this chapter. If we look over on the side, the total energy is still constant. It's just turning into an alternative form that we are not addressing in this chapter. So when we identify that it, there is a force present beside a conservative force, that would be friction, thrust, or any other force, pretty much it's not gravity, that can perform work, we need to use the work energy theorem. When the energy, or when the force is only coming from gravity, instead we will use the law of conservation of energy. I hope this lesson helped explain a little bit about the difference between a, a conservative force and a non-conservative force and when to apply the different equations. Please tune into a different lesson to show you how you would use this in a problem-solving approach.